think it's really helpful to know what your weakness is. And I'll say, I'm a great planner. I'm really good. I love my planner. I love to get it out. I love to chart, graph, list, love that. But I also tend to suffer from procrastination. Welcome to the show called Let's Talk Homeschool, brought to you by Apologia Educational Ministries. This is the show where we talk about everything homeschooling, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. We want to affirm and encourage you in the decision to homeschool, challenge and inspire you to take it to new heights, and celebrate everything you get to experience along the way in this adventure of a lifetime. We are your hosts, Davis and Rachel Carmen, and today's show is titled New Year's Action Items. Woohoo! Okay, Rachel, let's talk homeschool. There we go. So it's a brand new year, 2024. It is, yeah. January 1st, and it's time to kick this off. And as you can see, literally, yes, we've got some video format as part of the new way to watch this uh, podcast. You can obviously still listen to it uh, in audio only on Spotify, Apple mm-hmm. Podcasts, all your podcast platforms. So if you've been listening to us for the last five years, because this is the beginning of our sixth season. I can't season, believe that. That's crazy. Uh, you can continue just like you've always been doing it. Uh, if you have never listened to us before and you prefer to watch your podcast, well, this is the channel to watch us on. So welcome to the Let's Talk Homeschool podcast. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of terrifying, right? Because I used to be able to show up here like not this well-dressed and you look fabulous. <laughs> well, but, you know, it's a whole different game to be on video. And so it's a little disconcerting. It's going to take us a little while to get used to this. So I appreciate your patience in advance. But you also have an advantage over us, which is an advantage that our audiences have had for a long time. When we go to speak somewhere, we stand up and we don't get to meet everybody in the audience, but at least we get to see the whites of your eyes. But this is a whole new thing. So now we're launching out into video for this. And I just want to say... I miss seeing you. And so I hope that if we cross paths at a conference or an event that you'll come up and say, hey, and say, listen, I listen to your podcast or I watch you on YouTube. That'd be great. It'd be great to see you. And I do want to remind you also that I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you found us. But I want to remind you that we are human and we were created for fellowship. So don't let this be a substitute for actually being in a support group or going to a conference. Again, we're glad you're here, but you really do need a hug. You really do need a shoulder. You really do need to be with other humans. And so I do want to encourage you to go to a conference, sign up for a support group, go to a meeting, meet other people so you can actually be human again, right? Not just settle for this. Right. Well, and one of the things I personally love to witness when we go to a live conference is to see Rachel talking to a mom, putting her arm around her and praying with her. And I know yeah, you love I praying love with yeah. uh, these folks you meet on the road. Uh, it, it is. There's something beautiful about how God created us for fellowship, for relationship. Yep. I mean, the greatest commandment is to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind and strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. So right. that those are relationship words. Yeah. And God wants us to be in a literal relationship. Uh, yes, grateful for the technology to yeah. do video podcasts, to do audio podcasts, to have all the other ways electronically to be together virtually. There's some efficiencies with that, mm-hmm. but... Uh, even though relationships can be messy, they can be hard, they can be inefficient, that's that's how we were made. We were right. made to be together in fellowship one with another. Yeah, and so to that, we're going to go through all the conferences we already have scheduled for this year. And again, we really hope that if you have an opportunity to be at one of these, that you'll come up and say, hey, but why don't you tell everybody where we're going to be, where we already know. And right. if you would like us to come to your area, I would love to do a women's retreat. We would love to come and talk to your couples group. That's what we're in the business of doing is encouraging other families. So why don't you tell them where we're going to be? All right. So uh, you can send us an email if you want to start that conversation, and that is podcast at apologia.com. But January, at the end of this month, the right. 27th is the 27th to 28th is the first event in Alabama. Details to be determined. So we'll get you more info once we get that, and we need to because it's January. <laughs> uh, but then in March, March 14 to 16, we'll be in Illinois for the Patch Homeschool Conference. Mm-hmm. Then in April, the 12th through 13th, we'll be in Salt Lake City for the Utah Homeschool Conference. 
In June, we're going to be spending a week in New Jersey, the 10th through 16th of June, for the Harvey Cedars Bible Family Conference. So that's yeah, going to be a fun be week together. In June, soon after, we'll be in our home state of Shelby, North Carolina. The 28th through 29th of June, we'll be at a special needs conference. And then finally wrapping it up in July, 11th through 13th, we'll be in Phoenix, Arizona, for the AFHE homeschool convention. Yeah, so Arizona in July. So that's it's going to be a hot one. It is going to be a hot one. But anyway, we hope that to meet you at one of those places, we hope that we can give you a hug. We'd love to hear your heart because you get to hear ours all the time. So do stay in touch with us and do share this podcast with your in-laws, your parents, your brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, your support group, anybody that needs these messages and make sure that you like us so that we can get up in the ratings and more people can hear about us because this is really what we're all about is encouraging other families. We would have given a lot to have had this concern. Oh, yeah. when we were starting. So. Yeah, when we were starting our homeschool journey, we were listening to cassette tapes, then oh, CDs, goodness. but we were we were listening yeah. uh, in a kind of a self-paced format, you know, when you're driving in the car doing all that. Since podcasts are great because you can listen in the car, you can you are in control of the media that you're bringing in, and that's one of the messages we want to say mm-hmm. is we don't want to be a talk show where we talk about nothing. No. We literally want to fulfill the message we get at the beginning of every podcast. We want to affirm and encourage you in this decision, but we want to challenge and inspire you to take it to new heights, Mm -hmm. and there's plenty to celebrate. And we want to talk about all those milestones and moments, the highs and the lows that make this a great adventure. Exactly. We want you to be able to tune in and not waste your time because your time is really valuable. So we're glad you're here. So we're going to get to the meat of our message today, which is New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. That's what some people call it. Some people say New Year's goals. You may have remembered at the beginning, I called this, the title of this show, New Year's Action Items. You're changing, Mr. Carmen. Well, yeah, it's good to improve. It is. It's, yeah. (laughs) So we're going to get to that. But first, we want to tell you about a series we're going to be doing this year. So every year we typically do a series that with about 12 episodes and last year was no exception. Mm-hmm. We did one entitled Doing Family. We still have uh, episode 11 and 12 to do here at the beginning of 24. And then we'll begin a brand new series. And it's based on one of your books, Rachel. So why don't you tell folks a little bit about this new series we'll be doing in 24? Right. So this was the first book that I wrote called How Many Times Do I Have to Tell You? And it was based on this moment that I had with our oldest son, where I realized in this moment, I got him by the shoulders. Um, Most moms know that position with your kids. And I was like, look at me when I talk to you. And it was like light shone from heaven. And God was like, yeah, that'd be great. It would be awesome, Rachel, if you looked at me when I talked to you. And I was just like, whoa, what just happened? In that moment, I kind of realized that I was holding my kids to a different standard than what I was living, that there were all of these things that God was trying to get my attention and to say to me, and I was just ignoring him, and yet I wasn't allowing my children to ignore me. So, I mean, that's it's kind of a, a wonky way to introduce the book, but I, I would like you to already begin to think, what are things that you're saying to your kids that actually could reflect back to things that God would like to say to you. Because that's what we're going to talk about. There's 68 chapters in the book. We're going to do the top 10 in our series this next year. Right. There'll be an introduction. We'll do the top 10, and then there'll be a a conclusion. And we're going to call it How Many Times for short, so that we don't have to say the whole title, which is How Many Times Do I Have to Tell You?, just to talk about the series. So that's what we have planned for 24. But you could go ahead and pick up the book if you wanted to preemptively and go ahead and start reading through. The chapters are about 750 words each. At the end, there are introspective questions. So it's kind of a devotional book. Makes a great daily reading for you as a mom, dad. Great for you and a couple of friends over coffee. Very thought-provoking and challenging, I think. All right, so we're going to take a quick break and then return to this conversation. We'll be right back. So this podcast is brought to you by Apologia Educational Ministries. Their mission is to help homeschooling families learn, live, and defend the Christian faith. Apologia is the number one publisher of creation-based science, math, Bible, and worldview curricula with four homeschooling families with hundreds of number one awards for the course of over two decades. So creation-based and award-winning. Now, that's impressive, but what's more impressive is that Apologia is trusted by homeschooling families all across the USA and the world. Go to Apologia.com 
a great place to explore creation. Welcome back. So we've been talking about getting to New Year's action items. We kind of talked about some new things we're doing this year, that the video format that is going to be new for 24, the conferences we'll be at in as we go through the year, uh, and a brand new series based on your book, How Many Times, uh, that we'll be introducing this year. But now we want to get to the meat of the message, which is New Year's action items. So Every uh, year for the last five years, the first episode of the year has been on goal setting, on New Year's resolutions, action items. What, what are you looking forward to accomplishing in this new year that's, that's important, mm-hmm. that can improve your life? And so yeah. we're big planners. We really enjoy doing this. We've done this mm-hmm. for many years. Uh, and this year, we're going to continue some changes we made, some improvements Mm -hmm. and tweaks we made in 23. Uh, But first, I want to share a few quotes. Okay, go for it. Because, uh, you know, we'll add a little bit of levity, I'll say, to this. Uh, Some people may go, I'm just not a planner. I don't like this time of year because I know within two or three weeks, I'm going to fall off the wagon anyways. Sure. So uh, here's some to kind of lighten the mood for you. (laughs) I don't call them New Year's resolutions. I prefer the term casual promises to myself that I'm under no legal obligation to fulfill. <laughs> Who said that? Do I don't know, but do, do you feel that way? <laughs> yeah, I do. I have felt that way. Yeah. And, and I think it's tempting anytime somebody starts talking about this, you think, yeah, that's just not my wheelhouse, you know, next podcast. But I really want to challenge you to consider the possibilities here, because I do believe that we're constantly called to change and improvement. And right. that's what this can actually be. So. Yeah. So here's, here's some more to, to kind of get us in the mood here. Um, I love this one. I, ju- I just set out a box of donuts at work today just to see how many New Year's resolutions I could mess with. <laughs> <laughs> that's cruel. I mean, that's absolutely cruel. <laughs> That'd be fun to watch. Yeah, it would be, this. maybe. Okay, may all your troubles last as long as your New Year's resolutions. Ah. Again, kind of the yeah. point that people do fall off the wagon pretty quick. You know, you think if, if you could stave off t- trials and tribulations by maintaining your New Year's resolutions, you might... Stick to them a little longer. Yeah, so as we progress, they're going to get more and more serious here. So here's one. New Year's resolutions work like this. You think of something you really enjoy doing, and then you resolve to stop doing it. Oh, that's true. That's (laughs) I mean, the the discipline required is is hard. That's the thing. And often it is saying no. To yourself. To to bad habits that you enjoy. Yeah, uh, that's tough. I think I'm I'm thinking of nutrition when I think of that. I get it. Yeah, no, that's true. I do have a sweet tooth. You do. You do have a sweet tooth. I am resolved. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. All right, John Wooden said this, famous basketball coach, discipline yourself and others won't have to. Ooh, yeah, that's good. And that is a, a message to us as parents is it is important that we discipline our children. I remember, this is a funny thing. I'm just going to chase this for just this long. So we used to do regular field trips with our support, our local support group. And one time we toured the police station. Some of you know where this is going. And they showed us the holding room, right? And I remember our oldest was about eight because I had like a baby on the hip and our two oldest sons went into the holding room and they're looking around and the police officer said to them, this is adult timeout. And the kids were like, whoa. (laughs) And he said, yeah, if you don't learn to obey your mommy and daddy, then it's not like you don't ever have to obey. It means that I have to bring you and put you in this timeout. And the boys were like, whoa. <laughs> so, but it was really powerful. You know, the moms were kind of giggling, but the kids were like, my goodness, I thought it was just when I'm a kid. That is the charge for us to discipline them is so that they don't have to be disciplined by others, but it applies to us too. So, here, so here's a quote by Leo Tolstoy. Okay. Everybody thinks of changing humanity, but nobody thinks of changing himself. Yeah. Kind of on the same thinking. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be a hard road ahead, but then again, nothing of significance is easy. That's so true. So as you think about what you would like to accomplish this year, it, you may be motivated by the end result, right. but you know it's going to be hard to get there, which is why you are putting pen to paper to write it down to make a commitment yeah. of some kind. And you think of all the people that you admire and all the accomplishments that you admire, and you know you know that it took a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice. Right, and to some degree the word resolution is good because you, you resolve to do this hard thing. You determine, yeah. All right, Abraham Lincoln said this, Discipline is choosing between what you want now and uh, what you want most. 
Ooh, I like that one. What do you want most? Yeah. The comfort and safety of right now, status quo, or the improvement that would come with hard change later? Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. All right. And finally, success happens when you take 20 steps in one direction, and most people take one step in 20 directions. Oh, that's good, too. And that, that goes to one of the theories of the goal setting, and that is to set fewer goals rather than too many. That's so hard for me. It is. That, that's one of our difficulties. It's so hard for me because this time of year, you know, with the last year in my rear view, 2023 in the rear view, I'm just like, everything's possible. I can, it's January, right? Well, yeah. It, it's true. It's and so hard to so, do. So the, one of the thoughts on goal setting, resolution setting, action item setting even, is to really focus. And that mm-hmm. last quote says that. And uh, many people say you should only set three goals for a given year. Yeah. And there's a lot of truth to that. The point is to be focused, to mm-hmm. take tw- one, to take 20 steps in one direction. Uh, yeah. However, there's lots of areas of life yeah. that we might want to improve. And so the template that we have, and we're glad to send you this template, uh, send us a, an email, podcast at apology.com. We'll send you this template and our weekly template that we'll talk about here in a little bit. And it's not fancy, so don't think it's not graphic fancy. art no. or anything. And, I mean, this and is it's just... Meant, yeah, and it's meant for you to adjust and revise right. to your liking and working. Right. Uh, but in our template, we have 10 categories of life mm-hmm. that we typically set at least one goal. Often we set one, two, or three goals in each category. Right. And so it's really easy. If we had three goals in each of these 10 categories, you've got 30 goals for the year. You're contradicting your mm-hmm. quote, dear. Well, exactly. And that's part of my point is it's it's not easy. This is right. not easy to do. So you got to kind of figure out a little bit of what works for you, how you can focus mm-hmm. best. Yeah. Um, but there are there is more than one category to life. It's so true. these 10 categories, let me just run through quickly. The first is spiritual, your heart condition. Mm -hmm. What spiritual resolutions, goals, action items do you want to work towards this year? Mm -hmm. The second is loving your neighbor, service, charity, ministry to others. The third is physical, loving God with all your strength, all your body. That's where diet and nutrition and fitness can Mm -hmm. come in, which is a very common goal for people to make in a year. Uh, Fourth, Mental, education, mind, reading, writing, creative. This is loving God with all your mind. So you mm-hmm. see those first ones go to the greatest commandment. Mm-hmm. Probably good to set some goals uh, and make some commitments in those areas. Then, uh, number five, social, emotional, character, or being. Being mm. made in the image of God. What what kind of you know, people do you want to g- gather with through this year and get together with? Sixth, financial. It's always smart to make some financial goals. Get your savings to a certain level. Get your debt to a certain level. Uh, so number seven, marriage and family. Right. What goals do you want to have there? We're grandparents now, so we have some actual goals that we want to achieve that are doing something we might not naturally do that we're going to have to be resolved to review and look at. Um, number eight is work. At Apology, we got responsibilities. What do we want to accomplish in our work and ministry? Mm-hmm. Uh, then we always have travel goals. <laughs> right. uh, and a lot of people say you, who you are five years from now will be most determined by what you read, uh, wor- the, uh, the books you read, and the places you go to travel. You missed one. The, the people you meet, the places you go, and the books you read. Yes. You said one twice. Okay. So you want to go back and do that. Yeah, so most... Uh, People say that the who you are five years from now will be most determined by the people you meet, the books you read, and the places you travel to. Right, exactly. And we've certainly grown and learned a lot by traveling. Mm -hmm. And then the 10th category is kind of this catch-all. It's this other, it's typically house projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, For instance, in 23, I finished a fire pit hardscape. Yeah. Uh, That was a big house project that I worked on. So that's our template. Uh, Comments on our template, how how it works, what... What doesn't work? I love how elastic it is. It's not set in stone. It It's grown over time. I mean, I remember how it was when we first did it, but we've really made a lot of changes to it. And I think that's the key. As you grow and change and your life circumstances grow and change, that really needs to grow and change because okay. some things are sort of, and I mean this in the best positive way, some things are sort of on autopilot, some things are predetermined, and so of the 10 categories, it's really not a thing. Maybe we need to be mindful of things we want to maintain, but it's in a really 
kind of good place. Right. And so those, the priorities, the emphasis sort of shifts and changes. And not just for the year, but like for the quarter or for the month or the week. Well, right. And that's a great segue into this template we made for each week. Right. So uh, God ordained this seven-day week. That's not a man-made situation. That's not uh, based on the sun or the stars. That's God creating everything in six right. days, resting on the seven, giving us a model for how to discipline our lives. Mm -hmm. And so once a week, every Sunday night, Rachel and I get together and we look at the week ahead and what changes to the calendar happen, what appointments we have. But then we work we'll at our to-do list. And here's the key on this goal setting uh, to-do list for each week. There's the big goal. So yeah. of all the goals you put, whether you only put three goals or you have three in each category and you got 30 goals, right? what's the one most important goal for the year? If there's only yeah. one goal you can get done this year, what is it? Right. For heaven's sake, get that one thing done. It might be a big yeah. goal. It might be one that requires discipline. Right. It might be relatively short but hard. Mm -hmm. So, but, but on this goal setting list, you write down what is your stretch goal for the year? It's only one. Write it down every week. And that's the best way to get keep it in front of you constantly rather than forgetting it and falling off the wagon in, in January. Because we all need reminders. We really all do need reminders. And one of the things that we're doing this year is accountability with each other. So we've always shared our goals in the past, but even our weekly things, the one thing we're going to have that just to help each other. It enriches our marriage, our right. relationship, and it helps each other stay accountable. Yeah, we can ask each other. So, so yeah, you've been telling me this for the last you know several weeks. How are you actually doing on that? Or I don't see any movement on yeah. that. Right? So you yeah. got the stretch goal for the year, but also on this same piece of paper, we write down what is your pro priority target for the quarter. So mm. Now, now you're shortening the time frame. Okay, in the next three months, January, February, and March, what's the one thing you want to accomplish this week? For example, if you're writing a book, which would be mm -hmm. a really big project, right. you're not going to get it done in a quarter. No, you're not going to get it done in a month or a week. So maybe your goal for the quarter is to get three chapters drafted. Right. Something like that out yeah. of you know a longer book. You also write down your big rock for the month. Okay, mm -hmm. now you're narrowing the time frame down even more. I can think in terms of a month. Mm -hmm. I can. I, it's going to take me several weekends, maybe a few times through the week, and you can schedule this week. I got to get this one thing done to right. accomplish that big rock for the month. Right. And then I love this one, the main focus for this, this week. week. So here's my piece of paper with my to-do list for the week, and I have to ask myself, okay. Of everything I'm going to do this week, what's the one thing that would make all the difference in the world? And that's the one thing I'm going to make sure I get done. Yeah, and I, I love the the range of activities that can be, right? Because for you, well, and for both of us, sometimes it's been like, the one thing I can do this week is mail the grandkids birthday presents, right? I mean, that's, that's the most important thing I've got this week. Another time it could be, we have a, a meeting with our CPA, we got to prepare for that. So a wide range of things can fit into that category. Right. It doesn't have to be a specific goal that no. you wrote down, but it could be something that contributes towards that. Uh, but you're looking at it one week. And here's the beauty of this that, that I experienced in 23. I have another spreadsheet that I can send you the template where I wrote down what is the one main focus I had for each week. I literally got 52 out of 52 done. Now, of my almost 40 goals, I only got two-thirds of them done. But I got 52 out of 52 of the most important thing that I consider to be most important each week. Yeah. So, th again, th there's kind of the ebb and flow of success and failure and discipline and lack of discipline that happens when you make these resolutions. Yeah, and I think... You know, I'm a big advocate of knowing what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And I think it really applies. I think it's important to bring some real soberness and objectivity insofar as that's possible to making your annual goals and your weekly goals and your plan. I think it's really helpful to know what your weakness is. And I'll say, I'm a great planner. I'm really good. I love my planner. I love to get it out. I love to chart, graph, list, love that. But I also tend to suffer from procrastination. And the thing, and it's, it's on dumb things. Like I, I don't like to file <laughs> and my file pile will just pile, you know, I mean, It'll it's, it's like year. the leaning tower of Pisa and it's like, 
just file, right? And so when I make filing my one thing for the week and don't wait until December the 31st to get it done, it's a game changer for me because it clears my head and and I tell you and all of those things. So That's a, a real good example of something. You didn't have clear out my file pile on your annual goal. No. But it's an important part of achieving your goals through the year that is a weakness for you that you're exactly. concentrating on. And so helping each other with that, acknowledging that. So be, do come into the goals and the weekly thing, knowing what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And again, I've talked about this when it, we talk about character. You know, you want to guard your strengths and grow your weaknesses. And so that's something you can do underneath all of what we're talking about today through the year. You don't be stuck at who you have been, but dare to become who God has planned for you to be. Right. And then the final thing on this weekly to-do list is what I call the good habit for each day. Mm. So think in terms of Monday's washing day and laundry day. <laughs> Tuesday is, you know, out day to make your appointments and grocery shop. Wednesday is something else day. And so you might have a day to rest or to fast from technology. Uh, you might have a day to go on a date with your spouse. We, that's one of our good habits. One mm -hmm. day a week, we set aside as our date night. Uh, you might have a day to get out and go on a hike or a bike ride mm -hmm. and to do some of that kind of exercise outside of your normal exercise routine. Mm -hmm. um, I even have on one of my good habits on Saturday, I have a special kind of reading that I do right. uh, that I love doing. It's a, it's a wonderful, relaxing habit that grows and develops me. It's intentional reading. Mm -hmm. So things like that, but you have a good habit for each day. And I'm going to add this as a big kudo to Rachel. For years and years and years, Friday has been sheet day. Yeah. Where we changed the sheets to our bed and it be, has become this <laughs> bonding tradition yeah. that we wake up on Saturday morning and she reminds me it's sheet day. No, and no, on Friday morning. We wake up on Friday morning. Oh, yeah. back up. So we wake up on Friday morning and she reminds me it's sheet day, which means we don't have to make the bed that day, and yet we <laughs> love making the bed. But it means, oh, the, the bed's going to be unmade, and she's going to finish the laundry so that we can make the bed Friday night yeah. and just get into the clean sheets. And so that's a good habit yeah. for our Fridays. Yeah. So things like that that create traditions, bonding moments, and just good habits. Yeah, and those, again, are things that you can model and pass on to your children. So all of those things that you need to get done, if you'll – if you'll actually put them on a day, that's how that started for me. Sheet day is I was like, you know, we do need to change these every now and then. And so those things, moms, that feel like they're going undone but really need to get done, if you can assign them a day, not try to do them all on Saturday, but maybe just one day a week, that's what I had to do. Well, and I'm going to add another you know, um, idea for you and based on what we did when we had kids in the trenches, in mm -hmm. car seats, or in the trenches yep. of homeschooling, and that was Wednesday happened to be your out day. Yes. So there was only one day a week that Rachel allowed herself to, okay, we're going to pack up the van and we're going to go do grocery shopping, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, Instant whatever practice. other errands that yeah. we had. So that was the primary out day. And then a nap day because we mm -hmm. usually had a wana on Wednesday night and the kids were going to stay up later than normal. Yeah. So it, it can be done. It It's not going to all get done all the time, but I really believe in the power of this. We need to be aiming at something. We need to be about what is the year going to be about. And I think adopting a verse, adopting a theme, having a focus, coming around it. As now it's just a couple used to when it was all the kids here at home. We would have meetings with all of the kids and outline all of this and adopt a passage, just a brief verse and, and or a theme. And then we would often have the kids sign it and we would post it so we could all see it. What This is what we're focused on this year. So when other things came up, it was easy to say yes or no because did it align with what we were focused on that year? And so two things I want to say as we're wrapping up is there's just two really important things that we need to not forget as we're doing this. And that is we cannot predict nor can we control others. So we all know that, but sometimes we set goals based on doing those things. And we need to make sure that we're not trying to... Um, do things that are outside of our control. Well, do things that are outside of our control or um, 
counter chickens before they hatch. We need to make, we can't predict the future. We are responsible for what we know today and we can't control others, nor should we try to control others, manipulate them. So these goals and objectives are for us and they're for us to grow in what we can do to glorify and honor God and to grow in our relationships with others. Right. That's a good point. I mean, taking control of what we can control exactly, and then getting it done. Exactly. Whether it's the most important thing for this week the good habit for the day, those are the things that we can control. We mm-hmm. can control ourselves, and that's part of what this is all about. All right, so we love talking about planning and goal setting and action items for the new year, but it's time to bring this conversation to a close. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We hope you'll join us again next time. This is Let's Talk Homeschool, brought to you by Apologia Educational Ministries, and we are your hosts, Davis and Rachel Carmen. Have a great day, and until next time, we are walking by faith and enjoying the homeschooling adventure of a lifetime.